What's up, everybody? It's Keefe, and you're watching another edition of the Weekly Ritual Ghost Cult's new show, streaming all over the web if you're here from a multitude of sources. Thanks for being here. This is our weekly rock and metal news show where we talk about the biggest news of the week, some features we've done here at the website, ghostcultmag.com, music festivals, music tours, and shows that have been announced, and a whole lot more. So thanks for being here, doing the early Friday edition before I head out to the big metal show tonight here in San Francisco, going to see Overkill, X Order, and Heathen, hometown show for Heathen Bay Area legends, and super stoked for Overkill. We did an interview not too long ago with Bobby Blitz on the channel, on YouTube, check it out. Little clips around the world from the smaller socials, but that's what we do. Uh, I'm pre-gaming already for the concert. I got me a beer. Scooter is here. What's up, Scooter? Good to see you. Uh, I'm pre-gaming already for my show. We are doing some fun stuff. I like to say the best experience for this is on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook. Uh, but if you're here on TikTok or the Gram, thanks for being here. Ask us questions about metal. If you give us a super chat or a super thanks, you go to the top of the line. And if you give us a $5 super chat, since I'm in party mode, I'll do a shot of this Fireball whiskey, which normally... Is not a good idea for me, but I'm off work and I'm going to the metal show right after this, so I don't care. Cheers, everybody. Happy Thursday, almost Friday. Glad to see you. Ah, this is uh, drinking a Joseph Sprout from Trader Joe's because I ain't fancy. Sometimes I am. Not that fancy today. But uh, yeah, thanks for being here. Let us give you the layout of the show. Give me one second. Let me bring in the deck here. And so this is this is our our show is contained within this presentation. Again, check us out on YouTube. Check us out on Twitch. Please give us a follow there. We are hit, almost hitting four thousand <laughs> followers on YouTube. A lot of you are probably here from YouTube, so thank you. We really appreciate it. Let's just just to remind you though, we are ghostcultbag.com. A, a daily, your blabbermouth, your metal sucks, your metal injection, your lamb goat, your metal insider. Your piercing metal, we are one of them. If you're in Europe, it's metal hammer, Kerrang, etc. We are one of those. So that's what we do. What do you do? Drop a comment. Thanks for being here. <clears throat> All the things. If I'm not looking directly in your camera, it's because I have several. And then we got a little new lighting here. So uh, maybe if you're watching this on YouTube, you can comment on our brand new lighting setup. Check it out. So, yeah, a um, little bit of the housekeeping here. Oh, got the wrong date already. Nice work. Uh, did not update the date. <clears throat> it is it is July 13th Pacific time in the evening as I record this. It'll be the 14th or over the weekend if you rewatch it. Thanks for being here on the rewatch. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping, how we do the show. I do this introduction. Then we make some announcements, talk about some stuff on our mind, bring you an update on the latest features at Ghost Cult on YouTube. Then we hit the festival news, things that are happening this week or big things that have been announced. Then all the major concert tours, once again for the second week in a row, tons of tours getting announced or kicking off this week and this weekend. And then the major news of the week, as much as we can fit in in a reasonable amount of time. Then I'll bring you, Bog Wizard is here on Instagram. What's up, Bog Wizard? Uh, then I bring you some New Music Friday news, all the stuff you need to pick up, spin, purchase tomorrow, New Music Friday, July 14th. Then I like to do the mailbag segment, a little something fun I got in the mail or stuff I'm digging on or stuff Band sent me. I got a real special one today. So this is going to be a treat. Mm -mm -mm. All righty. So that's the housekeeping. Now for some announcements. Uh, this is hella sad, and this entire show is dedicated to this guy. Mean Pete Kowalski. You probably know him from hardcore bands like Remembering Never and Bishop, but also his more recent metal project, Ether Coven, and other bands. He died this week after a long battle with cancer. He had been in remission. He'd been making a bunch of music. He'd been doing well, and then the cancer returned, and he's passed on. And even though his name was Mean Pete, and he was ferocious, as a vocalist and a front man and a guitar player and a persona on stage, you could not have a nicer, better, more caring person in the hardcore and metal world. I am pretty much devastated that this guy's passed. We interviewed him a few times, met him a few times. He was always just great. And uh, a lot of very few people in the music world walk the walk and talk the talk. And I know that's a cliche, but literally whatever this guy believed in and sang about, he lived. 
So uh, I don't have any further information, but if you want to um, donate to an animal shelter, a no-kill shelter, or some kind of animal cause, that would probably make Pete happy Pete in the uh, in the netherworlds instead of uh, mean Pete. I don't think he was that. He was mean on stage. He was mean looking, but he wasn't mean at all. Uh, and I'm sorry he's gone. The world is a shittier place without him. Rest in power, Pete. Uh, again, an update on Year of the Knife. They continue to hold a vigil for Maddie Watkins in Salt Lake City. She's in the hospital. They had a terrible van crash. She is starting to be responsive to the sound of her family and touch. She has a long way to go. I know their GoFundMe has raised a lot of money, but it's not nearly enough what a uninsured professional musician is going to need for the amount of recovery she needs to make. So the link is still in the description. Please donate if you can. They are a phenomenal band. She is a terrific person by all accounts. And the band, on top of her being in the hospital and having a long way to go to recovery, the band is also recovering from injuries. All their gear was destroyed. Their vehicle was destroyed. And they need to start from scratch. So just tough stuff. Just really tough. Um, also, again, here's Jesse Malin. We're just going to keep this up for a while. Jesse Malin had a spinal stroke. He is a hardcore and rock music legend. In addition to being in the band Degeneration and his long solo career, he's also uh, the owner of the Bowery Electric in New York City and done countless, countless things for charity for people. And so I really think, um, you know, it's important and imperative if you can donate to his relief fund. I would really appreciate it. All righty, moving that along. And this is just a picture of outer space that I like, which enables me to take a drink. Hmm. Looks like we got a comment somewhere on the web. Let's see what it is. Oh, my bro is here, my brother from another mother and another ghost cultist, Curtis Dunlop. What's up, bro? Good to see you. Thanks for being here and supporting always what I do. Liz is on fire is here. If you have a funny and clever screen name, I'm going to shout it out. Liz is on fire. She's on fire, everybody. So that was the announcements. And now, uh, just to remind you, we are on threads. Do we need one more social network to be on? Not really. Does the world need another social network, especially one run by Facebook? No, but threads is supposed to be the Twitter killer. And that is a thing now. So go check us out on threads. I haven't really posted a lot there. Still posting on Mastodon. Can't tell you if anybody likes it. Oh my God, pancakes or waffles? Well, it depends, Liz. Generally, if I'm making them, I want pancakes. But if I've got some fried chicken, I want it with waffles and syrup. Does that make sense? Liz is asking if I like pancakes or waffles. Do you? Which one do you prefer, pancakes or waffles? What if you like crepes? Some people out there like crepes. I don't know. Can't say. Social media networks, threads. Ghost Cult is on threads. Ghost Cult is now on Discord. Check us out. Ghost Cult is on Reddit. If you want to get off these social networks and not depend on social media to deliver your news to you, or you could just stay tuned to ghostcultmag.com for every post. But we do a lot of stuff that's not on ghostcultmag.com. Uh, all our interviews are here on YouTube and other places too. Podcasts, that's coming up. I'm also on Twitch. If you're on Twitch right now watching this, please give us a sub. We are trying to put up those better than rookie numbers. I'm going to take another sip of this beer. Emanic... Emanicufessin, which I feel like is a, uh, I feel like it's a, a anthrax reference. I hope it is. You may notice my anthrax patch on my battle vest behind me. If you're watching on some of these channels, you can see it. And um, yeah, uh, favorite pizza topping. I mean, pepperoni uh, is a given. Sausage is also good. I'm coming back to New York City in just a few weeks to visit. I probably won't get to New York City proper till the second or th second week of August, but number one, you can count on me going to Joe's Pizza, especially the one on 3rd Avenue and 14th Street, and I'm going to get the Joe's Special, which is pepperoni, sausage, and red onion. That's what I'm doing. It's going right in the face hole, right in the hole in my face. Pizza in California is lacking. Uh, a lot of good Detroit-style pizza, a couple of good pizza places. Overall, not really good pizza at all. All right, just to just remind you, as I mentioned, a lot of you might be here from YouTube, and uh, we're just sharing some of our YouTube success. 101 new followers, 25,000 total views, uh, 45,000 minutes watched. I don't know what that all means, but it seems like we're doing well. So thanks for being here. If you're here from YouTube specifically, I appreciate you, and uh, yeah, thanks so much. 
Anywho, interviews this week, features this week at Ghost Cult Mag. We interviewed Trevor Phipps of Unearth. They have a brand new album out that is crushing. And we talked to Trevor about changes in the band. 25 years in the music business as a band. A lot of touring, festivals, all kinds of stuff going on with the Unearth camp right now. And it's a pretty fun interview. We caught up with him while he's on the road. Definitely. Awesome. Also, also, if you like punk rock, you want to check out this interview I did with Laura and Veronica. They are from Riot Squad Media, and they put on a festival, among other bookings they do, in the Pennsylvania area. They do Camp Punksylvania, which is going to take place in Scranton, PA, over Labor Day. And it features a ton of killer pop punk bands and hardcore bands, uh, specifically my favorites, the headliners, of course, the Suicide Machines, Tsunami Bomb, uh, War on Women, uh, a Wilhelm Scream reunited, a Wilhelm Scream, so good, so good. This interview was awesome. If you want to know how festivals get booked and how shows get booked and how you can make your band more attractive to bookers, check out this interview I did with Laura and Veronica. In addition, you can check out the Ghost Cult Magazine podcast I talked about a little last week. We have podcasts that are not just our YouTube videos. This show will be a podcast. There's also some specific exclusive podcast content, including my monthly episode with our senior editor, Steve Tovey, who runs our whole reviews team. And we, every month, once a month for an episode, we forecast the month coming, all the releases that are coming up and all the releases that have come out already and what we think of them. And Steve sees everything that comes through here for a review. So he's the guy to talk to. I see, I see in here a lot. I don't see in here at all. I try. And uh, yeah, if you, uh, so many people tell me like, I didn't know that album was coming out. I didn't know this, this album is out. I didn't know. Stay tuned, follow our website. We have a post or two every week about this and also this podcast monthly. So this is how you find out what's coming out. We also support the Heavy Business Podcast brought to you by C Squared Music Marketing and PR hosted by Aaliyah Day and Curtis Dewar. And they talk to music industry professionals, again, to help DIY bands. This is a, a passion of Ghost Cults. We have a lot of content coming probably in the fall where we're going to share a lot of free resources on how bands can help improve themselves so they can get out there and, and, and make their music for a living someday. Word. Word to the bird. All right. Also, also, because I don't have enough to do, I am the co-host of the Glacially Musical Podcast, as in pour a beer, metal and swearing, sometimes rock, sometimes NHL hockey, sometimes comic book geek stuff. We finished our series on the Red Hot Chili Peppers, not that metal, but really fascinating and interesting to cover their early records. And we're doing a brief series. Usually we do a chaser in between. Get it? A chaser. Okay. Shot glass. Donate. And I'll drink a shot of this cinnamon, this rum, this fireball whiskey. Um, but, uh, yeah, we are starting a brief series on Grand Funk Railroad. Uh, I think it's interesting. They were one of the biggest selling and first huge American rock bands. And so very interesting stuff. And you hear me, me and Nick talk all about the early American rock history, real classic rock, not rock and roll from the fifties. That's, you know, kind of pop music, but not bad. Anywho, check it out. <clears throat> Once again, this video is brought to you by our affiliate partner, Merch Bar. Chances are, if you're watching this, you support the bands you love. You buy music. You buy vinyl. You get cassettes still. You rock the hats. You get the shirts. You get the flags. You got patches and pins for your battle vest like mine. Merch Bar has you covered. And if you use our link, you get a discount every time you visit using our link and check it out with the link at, at checkout. Uh, Again, everything you could possibly want. Exclusive vinyl. Here's an image of some vinyls. I have a few of these myself. And there's also some shirts, constant, you know, current stuff like Mastodon, as well as some classic stuff and even some fun movie things. So Merch Bar, for all your merch needs, check out the link in the description or in our link tree if that's a thing you do. Another sip of the good old beer here. Everybody hear me all right out there? I want to make sure I'm really... Move my mic to an advantageous place here. So I'm going to rearrange this a little. All right. Moving right along. Festival news. It's time. It's time. The time is nigh. Let's do some festival news. This is the story of the week. This is absolutely the story of the week. Ozzy Osbourne has pulled out of the controversial Power Trip Festival for many reasons. It's controversial. 
Ozzy made a statement on Monday. He's just not up to performing. He hasn't played in five years, and he does not want his first show back to be crap. He is intending to tour in the summer of 2024. We'll see. It's hard to know. But uh, I wish you the best, Ozzy. I don't want him to tour if he's not up to it at all. If he never tours again, that's sad. But also, I know he'll be sad, but I'd really rather him not tour than get worse physically. He's almost 80 years old. It's crazy. Uh, don't tour. Replacing Ozzy, and now on the poster for the festival, is Judas Priest. He said his friends would be replacing him and they would be awesome. He was right. Hey, Anti Moz Beast is here. What's up, Gabe? Um, so Power Trip Festival, very expensive, like $1,000 minimum for the weekend. And it's only these six bands. Granted, it's Guns N' Roses and Iron Maiden on the same day. ACDC and now Judas Priest instead of Ozzy. Metallica and Tool. That's amazing. But very expensive, hard to get to. And, you know, also happening the same weekend as Aftershock Festival up here in the Bay Area near me. Uh, tons of bands for a lot less money. So I guess you got to pick your spots. And I think Guns is playing uh, Aftershock anyway, as it, as his tool. So that's a whole thing. Just throwing it out there. Kim Hansen is here. What's up, Pharma Diver, a ghost cultist. Curtis is here on YouTube, a ghost cultist. Good to see you all. Thanks for being here. Appreciate the support. Doing the show early so I can go to a show coming up soon. Uh, Incarceration Fest is this weekend. We talked about this a little last week. Limp Biscuit, Pantera, Slipknot. It's like 1999 all over again. And uh, a bunch of other big bands. So that'll be fun. Taking place at the Ohio State uh, Prison, Reformatory Prison, where Shawshank Redemption was filmed and based on. And you can tour the prison and get a tattoo and get a prison tattoo at the festival. Ink, incarceration, in case you didn't get that portamento of the two words. Bloodstunk Open Air is coming up in four weeks. Ghost Cult will be covering it once again. We're, stu we're super stoked and honored to always be covering awesome festivals all over the world. We appreciate any support from the music industry. And Bloodstock Open Air, it's four weeks away. Their day tickets for Sunday have sold out. Limited passes remain for Friday and Saturday, and weekend passes are also close to selling out. They also announced a bunch of new bands, uh, Battle of the Bands winners, the Middle to the Masses uh, contest winners, Kill Switch Engage Meshuggah Megadeth, In Flames Trypticon Halloween. Uh, unbelievable festival. So uh, Abad is on there. Uh, you know, so, uh, so many killer bands. So definitely want to go to Bloodstock if you're there. Annette Jackson, hello. How are you? Good to see you. Always, always glad to see you. Thank you so much. Continuing, continuing, continuing. So Crucial Fest 12 is coming up at the end of the summer. Uh, a lot of noise rock and hardcore, portrayal of guilt, whores, Bongzilla, cloakroom, great band from Chicago, Mike Scheidt, the frontman of Yob Solo, Will Haven. We've got an interview coming up with Will Haven soon. Glassing, Ms. Moore, new album soon, Unrequited, Cadabra, Worship. So many killer bands. This is a lot of fun. Definitely want to check that out. Salt Lake City, August 24th and 27th, in case you were wondering. I need to get to Salt Lake City. They got the famous heavy metal record shop. Supposed to have a great hardcore scene. I need to go check out some Salt Lake City someday. Uh, that's incarceration again. Need to be deleting that. Hordes Fest is coming up soon uh, at the end of September in Scotland. Slow Dragon Music presents Hordes Fest, and they have announced the headliner is the killer modern black metal band hell ripper who just released a brand new album you can catch a review of that at ghost cult mag hell ripper is awesome uh dog tired iron altar Wargrave, tons of killer underground bands this is this is definitely one of the best uk metal festivals okay uh Berkey rock city we talked a little bit about this there's no uh there's no the uh, festival this year in um, Santa Fe, New Mexico is usually the uh, the um, the Mesa on the Mountain Festival, right? And uh, they're having instead a smaller festival this year, Berkey Rock City, Albuquerque. Uh, and so Weed Eater, Dead Meadow here from the Bay Area, Pike vs. the Automaton, that's uh, Matt Pike of Sleep and High on Fire, Brant Bjork Trio, Beelzebong. Yawning Balch, which just put a new record out. Electric Citizen, so many killer bands. And so they announced the day split. So I just want to 
show you this really quick. Here's the day one and the day two of these two festivals. Um, they are bottom down instead of top down. But if you want to freeze frame this and pause and check it out, there's also a post on our website about this festival. It's pretty killer. Farm Aid. I'm just throwing it out there. Farmers need support and help. Part of my day job is uh, working with a company that helps farmers. And Farm Aid 2023 has been announced in Noblesville, Indiana. Neil Young, Willie Nelson and the family. Bless Willie Nelson's weed heart. He is 90 years old. John Mellencamp, Dave Matthews, and Tim Reynolds, Margot Price, a bunch of other artists. Farm Aid, I think they're going to do a live stream. It's all for charity, uh, September 23rd. Why not? All righty. Well, continuing TikTok, always full of smart asses. I'm not a boomer. You're also making yourself look like a dumbass millennial. But anyway, cool that cool, cool sick burn, bro. There's two knobs on the internet. You can swipe past this and go to something else, or swipe up and go to something else if you don't like this. But if you're hanging out with us, I appreciate you. I really do. All righty. Uh, concert time. Remember concerts? Concerts are back. Lots of stuff announced this week. Um, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Because I don't have any left. Anyway, this is this is the replacement of my feelings right here. Mm. Overkill. I'm going to the show right after this is over. Probably in about 40 minutes. I'm le getting in an Uber and I'm going to the show. Overkill, Exorder, and Heathen. The Scorching the Earth tour, tour. Kicking off tonight at Great American Music Hall in San Francisco. Freeze the video and see if they're coming to your town. And do not miss this thrash -tastic. Amazing show. I'm super excited. I love Overkill so much. One of the most consistent bands ever. Super cool. Feral Cuts is here. What's up, Feral Cuts? Volbeat has kicked off their new tour with Hailstorm and Bad Wolves. Uh, they played last night in Toronto. And uh, they're going all over the place. Midwest, Canada, Western Canada, and then back to the East Coast. Uh, looks like Connecticut, New Jersey, and PA for the last few of those. Mashuga! It's time for some Mashuga face. We were talking about this last week. We had a hint that this was happening. They fully announced the North American tour for Mashuga. Mashuga in Flames and Whitechapel kicking off in late November in San Diego. They're not quite coming to San Francisco. They're going to Wheatland, which is near Sacramento. It's kind of out of the way, but I might go. We'll see. I try not to ever miss Mashuga. If I can, and In Flames is still great live. They toured together last year on a similar bill. Pro Fanatica is kicking off their new tour tomorrow, I think. And they are also playing the Bay Area soon. We'll be covering this tour. Also, their new album is coming out on Season of Mist in September. Do not miss it. That's the, uh, the Pro Fanatica is the cult American black metal band. Wow. So much good black metal coming out of the U.S. now with Black Braid and, Co and Cloak. Um, just so many cool bands. Megadeth has announced a brief run of dates, the Crush the World Tour. Uh, they will be supported by the reunion of Biohazard, the classic reunion, on a handful of dates. They're also playing festivals. Biohazard is also playing some exclusive festivals. So you definitely check out Megadeth on this handful of dates if they're coming to your town. Also, also, probably one of the biggest stories of last year, the reunion of Porno for Pyros. They have apparently recorded some new music. Maybe it's an EP. It's probably an album. They have announced a 30th anniversary tour. And again, the excitement for the return of Porno for Pyros even is even more than Jane's Addiction somehow. So I think that's very interesting. All righty, our pals in Narcotic Wasteland are going to kick off a huge, huge headline tour in about two more weeks. Scorgatron and some other bands are opening. The Sex, Lies, and DNA tour, if you're like, get the serial killer reference, just kind of fun. But uh, we're huge Narcotic Wasteland fans. They're going in a more thrash direction than straight up death metal. And I'm here for it. Very exciting. Also, also, Protest the Hero has announced a huge tour with Moontooth, the Callous Dow Boys, and some other bands. Uh, that's going to kick off in October. Uh, Protest the Hero has not had a tour in a long time, so I think this is, again, probably going to be a huge tour that sells out every city. Just think, just just speaking my truth there. 
Mud Veins Tour is coming up soon. The psychotherapy sessions, Cold Chamber, Gore, Nonpoint, and Butcher Babies on different dates. Very exciting tour of amphitheaters and large venues starting next week, a week from today. <clears throat> Corey Taylor, in addition to announcing his upcoming solo album, CMFT2, has announced a brief European tour. Corey Taylor is every, everywhere. You know what he thinks. He wants you to know what he thinks at all times. So, yeah, that's uh, just the whole thing. <laughs> Thank you, Auntie Mosby's. Tell him, Keith. That's right. I'll tell him, Steve, Dave. Ice Giant. This is, I'm so excited for this. Ice Giant has announced their brand new album that's coming out in September, and they are kicking off a headline tour the night it releases with Scorched Moon. So Ice Giant's like symphonic, progressive, thrash metal. Scorched Moon is progressive metal. They're going to go from Boston down south and back up again. So pretty exciting stuff. I hope to catch the Brooklyn show if I'm in New York at that time. I think I will be. Just because I needed to know you needed to know this, Goo Goo Dolls are playing with Fits in the Tantrums on the Big Night Out tour. Uh, I don't know if you know this, Goo Goo Dolls started out as like kind of a hardcore punk band. And then they kind of, you know, became the band we all know, this radio rock post-grunge band. But Goo Goo Dolls was a punk band to start with. And sometimes they do play some occasional old school hardcore songs. Not super hardcore, but like a little, you know, cross between hardcore and pop punk. Just fun to know. Just fun to know. Go do your research. Go back in time. It's not just Iris which is a great song, undoubtedly. Uh, also also kicking off their tour, already underway, Slightly Stupid and Sublime with Rome and a few other bands. Uh, I'm always reminded of the, um, the song Sublime with Rome is not sublime. Uh, but yeah, anyhow, uh, Slightly Stupid on tour now. Also coming up in Europe, got some Europe dates, our pals in Capra. You might notice the flag over my shoulder if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch. Capra is kicking off an extensive tour of Europe. They are working on new music. A new album is in the works, and they are just hitting the road for some late summer, early fall shows. Such a good, such a good band. And... then Capra is a band for you. Uh, Cryptopsy is back. They, they released a new song and a video this week. They announced a new album. And they have announced the Carnival of Death Tour. I wanted to shout this out. Look at the quality of these bands. Carnival of Death Tour, Cryptopsy, Abysmal Dawn, Hate, Reaping is Modia, and more coming to your town. So do not miss Cryptopsy when they come back. One of the best technical death metal bands of all time. I said it, of all time time all time converge has added additional dates they already had a bunch of stuff booked for the fall a couple of festivals including some dates with botch and cave in but now they've announced a short headline tour of the west coast with deaf club and some other bands do not miss converge whenever they tour don't miss them don't miss them uh capra fans also would be among converge fans rick v nasties is here what's up rick Good to see you. All right. Uh, I always say this band name wrong, but their debut album is coming out this week. Uh, Voice of Bay of Brayprot. Brayprot? I'm sorry if I said that wrong. It's the Indonesian teenage thrash metal band. They started out by making covers, and now they make original music. They are got an American tour book finally. Their album Retas is coming out this week, and they are very impressive for young people playing metal. So definitely check them out. Interplanet Janet is here. Another cool name. Yet another cool name. Wendiglo is here on TikTok. Shout out to you. Good names. We like all the good screen names. Misfits played last week. We put a review up of one of their shows from late June. They have one more show coming up. This is Talking Stick Resort in Arizona this weekend with AFI and Fear, original Misfits. Glenn and Jerry Doyle doesn't even get on the poster anymore, but he should. It's unfair to him, uh, even if he's not an original member. Misfits, uh, hearing nothing but raves about the tour, including Glenn's voice. So uh, for all the Glenn Danzig haters out there, uh, he's apparently killing it and doesn't care what you think about him or how many times you watch the video of him getting punched out. He's still rich, and nobody knows that guy except because he punched out Danzig. Can't name one song from the Northside Kings. Can you? I'll wait. I didn't think you could. Okay. 
Moving on. This is Creed. We talked about this last week. Creed broke the internet. Uh, Creed has changed their social media stuff and put up a teaser intimating they are going on tour to support the 25th anniversary of album human clay Creed is coming Creed is coming all right the virgins of the seven seas is here uh here's an awesome show coming up in the uk pretty soon our own duncan evans is not only a writer and interviewer and reviewer here at ghost cult he's also an artist he used to be in a band a forest of stars the uk sort of black folk metal band and he is doing a headline show with miranda aria I hope I said that correctly. I might not have, but I apologize. That's taking place at the Seven Arts in Leeds Saturday on the 7th of October. And he's got a new record coming out. So we're very stoked for our man, Duncan. Uh, Duncan Evans and the Weeping Starlight is his official band name now. So very cool. And then uh, here's a cancellation. Heavy metal venues of all time, concert venues in the whole world has been closed. They are having some issues getting reopened. Uh, the city is kind of against them. There's a kind of drama going on. But Turnstile was forced to completely cancel their show because that was supposed to be at that venue. And they couldn't find a suitable replacement. So they just refunded their fans and um, automatically refunded, which a lot of bands don't do anymore. So I thought that was impressive by Turnstile, one of the most in-demand bands in the world. It's hard to even get in to cover them, honestly, for us, but super excited. I saw them at Sick New World for a hot minute. They were great. Speaking of a hot minute, it was hot out there. Uh, and then here's a difficult story I didn't want to talk about, but here we are. Trigger warning for uh, DV and other things. Uh, Nothing More has canceled their upcoming headline tour. The Spirits North American Tour, they have also pulled out of their tour with Godsmack and Stain that's kicking off soon. Uh, the lead singer had a DV case against him a few years ago with his girlfriend he just recently broke up with, but a she shared information on her private socials about this, and then the internet will not let you forget. They shared the entire court case. Johnny Hawkins is the lead singer, nothing more he confessed to this and fessed up on his socials. The band made a statement. Uh, you know, it's hard to know what the truth is of these things, but one thing is true. He did run over his girlfriend at the time with his truck. Wow. Even if she didn't want to press charges, that's just a whole wow. Um, and again, I we've interviewed that band and covered that band a whole bunch. So who knows what's going to happen with them in the future? We shall see. But I thought you should know in case you were going to see them at one of those shows. They are not doing those shows. Uh, anyhow, that is it. We made it through all the festivals and tours and features, and now it's time to rapid fire go through the news. It's 5.30. I need to hit the road in about 30 minutes or less, so that's the, the clock is ticking once again. Throw me a super chat on YouTube in any $5 amount, and I will do a shot of this Fireball whiskey that I most definitely should not be drinking on an empty stomach. But huh, that's life. What are you going to do? I did have a salad for lunch, so that's healthy. Uh, I don't know if you are aware of the Insidious movie franchise. Do you like horror movies? You probably like horror movies if you like metal. Uh, this image is very low, but I got the poster right here if you want to see it. Actually, I have a whole bunch of these posters. And if anybody wants an Insidious to the Red Door or Insidious the Red Door poster, I'll send you one. DM me. Uh, or maybe if you fireball chat me the $5 for the fireball shot, I'll send you a poster. They so that movie's directed and starring Patrick Wilson. You probably know him from the movie Watchmen. He was Night Owl. Ghost has a song on the soundtrack, a cover. Uh, I was really blown away by this. The, uh, the cover of Shakespeare's Sister Stay with Patrick Wilson singing lead on the song with Papa. Tony Joe is here. What's up, Tony? Good to see you. Happy almost weekend. So, Insidious to the Red Door. Heard good things about it, haven't seen it. But Ghost has a song on the soundtrack. If you like Ghost, if you don't like Ghost, this is the only Ghost story in the show this week. But Patrick Wilson singing with Ghost on a cover from the 90s. Pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. I've heard good things about this movie. This is Fall Bar. They've announced a brand new album. They dropped a new single in a video. Uh, bleak, 
crusty black metal from the UK, probably one of the hotbeds of music in the world right now for extreme music. If you love black metal, most of the best stuff is coming from the UK right now. And they're also going on tour. So stay tuned for all the Svalbard things. Hopefully we'll interview the band again. Very exciting stuff. Also, also Clutch Surprise released a third live album, digital live album in their series of live albums, the PA Tapes, Seattle 1010 22, just from last fall, less than a year ago. And it includes a Black Sabbath cover. Clutch doesn't do a lot of covers, but they covered Lord of This World, my favorite Black Sabbath song. And I listened to it today and it was awesome. So definitely if you love Clutch, you want this, you want to go stream this on Spotify or pay for it somewhere else. Metallica, Metallica, Metallica. They released a new trailer for their live cinema event coming up next month. They're going to record and live stream their Arlington, Texas shows over two days, just like their concerts over two days. So you will have to go to the movie theaters twice if you care enough to see Metallica in the movies twice. If you can't go to the shows. And uh, this poster is particularly rad, so I wanted to feature it. And uh, I'm sure we're going to get more Metallica news and videos leading up to their American tour in three weeks time. First Creed and now Puddle of Mud. Oh my gosh, what do we do to deserve this? Probably everything. We deserve everything coming to us. Puddle of Mud has released a new song and is coming back with a new album. I listened to this song, so you don't have to, and it was pure torture. It's called My Baby, and it's like they rewrote that first song they ever did, She Hates Me, or the second song. You know, Blurry's not a bad song, but Puddle of Mud with an extra D. No one asked for this. I appreciate if Wes is trying to turn his life around and make music instead of make trouble, but like, oh man, no one needed this. No one needed this at all. Anyway, good luck to you, Puddle of Mud. An interesting album I didn't know I needed is this album, DFL, which was a 1990s hardcore band from New York City, which features the King Ad Rock, that is my name, from Beastie Boys. Ad Rock is on bass. And they are putting out a new album, uh, sort of re-releasing their lost album on vinyl and a whole bunch of other things. They have a current lineup of the band, which kind of intimates to me they're going to try to do some new stuff and a show or two. So very cool. My Crazy Life DFL coming soon. Pre-orders are live now. Check it out. Also, also, you may recognize one of the chaps in this photo as Michael C. Hall of... Dexter and Six Feet Under. He also has a rock band with members of the Wallflowers and some other bands. Princess Goes, it's the shortened version of the full name, which was Princess Goes to the Butterfly Museum. I don't know if you know this, Michael Hall has Michael C. Hall has also been on Broadway. He's a great singer, kind of in the vein of David Bowie, but like electronica David Bowie. And uh, so they have a new single, a new video, and a new album coming soon. I do believe they have a UK tour, a European tour, full tour booked for the fall. And maybe a record release show in September in New York City. We will try to attend if we can. Here it goes, Colt. But Michael C. Hall, very exciting stuff. Also, also from Michael C. Hall to death metal bands covering classic rock. This is In Human Condition featuring members of Obituary and Venom Inc. and a bunch of other bands. And they just covered with a hilarious new video the classic Blue Oyster Cult song Godzilla, one of the big hits of Blue Oyster Cult. And they, the video is awesome. You should definitely go watch it. I can't show it here because I'll get demonetized, but really cool. Really cool. This is I Am. We've been doing a lot of coverage of this band. This is the Doom, Psychedelic Doom Supergroup with members of Typo Negative, Crowbar, and Down. We interviewed Johnny Kelly. You can check that out here on YouTube. I'll link it again so you can check it out. But also they did a full band interview, their very first, with all the members. They're in the studio working on a full-length album and they're in New Orleans recording, and the whole band did this interview. I'll link it in the description, and it's a definite eye-opener uh, to hear about how this band came together and how they're working on the songs and who's going to do what. I think it's very interesting. People are super excited for this, as am I. Striper has been in the news a bit lately. They ended a U.S. tour. Michael Sweet, the front man, had some health issues, but they are doing a live concert live stream from Basement East in Nashville, where the band is based out of. And uh, if you're a fan of these guys, you definitely want to ca catch the live stream. I think it's actually pretty inexpensive for a very good value. Uh, a lot of these live streams are still pretty good. They don't replace a, an in-person show for me, but 
you know, in light of that, if you can't get to a show, a live stream is not a bad thing. But I always prefer the real thing. Uh, this is the Slowmatics. They have announced a new album, dropped a new single, all that jazz. That's coming up soon. One of the cooler bands in Psychedelic Stone or Doom. It's a very interesting photo of them in an apartment building, it looks like. Foreigner, this, this post has gone viral on Ghost Cult socials um, for a reason I didn't intend. But Foreigner is on their epic farewell tour with no actual original members of Foreigner right now. But they are putting out a, co a companion album a live album called Foreigner Farewell. Uh, I think we posted the story and accidentally had a photo sent to us with the wrong label on it. And so the whole internet got bent out of shape because we had the wrong photo of Foreigner. I don't even know if a current photo exists of Foreigner because they have a whole scab band. But if you've never seen Foreigner and you need to hear those songs live, go right ahead. I did not see them back in the day, so I don't think I'm ever going to see them. Keith Emerson, we're just going to keep the classic rock vein going three in a row. Keith Emerson's the legendary and late keyboard player of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. I was very lucky enough to see that band twice. There is a 20 CD box set of Keith Emerson music coming this fall. 20. 20 CDs. I don't know if I need this, but I kind of curious that I want it. Keith Emerson, one of the best keyboard players ever. Clown2935 is here. What's up? What's up? So, yeah, uh, I did see the Ramones twice. I'm old enough that I saw the Ramones. I have some Ramones memorabilia, including a Johnny Ramone guitar pick. Not my favorite guy in the Ramones. That would be Dee Dee or Joey. But I have a Ramones pick. I have some Ramones classic albums. I saw them twice, uh, late 80s and mid 90s. Uh, technically, maybe three times because I, they were also at um, the Lollapalooza I saw with Metallica and Soundgarden. So I did see them three times, actually, three times. So good times. Missed those guys. Uh, mostly passed away, except a couple. So, But Keith Emerson, if you like progressive rock and classic rock, might be worth checking out. Also, also, this is Chupacabra. We premiered their new song this week, FTDD. We're going to interview the band soon. They have their debut EP coming out. And as I mentioned recently on the show, they sound their new music is the soundtrack to the Slayer podcast. Uh, brought to you by DX Ferris, who's the Slayer book author two times over. So you definitely want to check that out. I just bought his new updated version of his Slayer book, and I'm hoping to talk to DX coming soon. Cadillac Wrecker is here. Hello, Cadillac Wrecker. Cool name. Yeah, right. Farewell to the band members of Farner who weren't Farner. I know, it's right. Like, there's more people who haven't been in Farner than have been. I don't know. It's hard. I mean, like, I understand that if you are put enough time in a band. There are a lot of bands out there with one or two remaining members. It's up to you to decide if they should be or should not be foreigner. I, on one hand, I'm glad there's people out there playing that music. There's some people who want to hear it. And then on the other hand, I'm like, mm, no original members shouldn't probably be continuing. I don't think. All righty. Um, yeah, man. Uh, here's uh, another one we did today. We did the premiere of this band. Uh, this is Anti Mare, the Swedish uh, Swedish death metal band, and their new single is Elevated, which you can stream right now at ghostcoldband.com. We do some premieres still. Not always. A lot of bands don't even share the stuff we do when we do stuff with them, but they did, and uh, I'm I'm happy when the bands do take notice. This is Sauce Leopard. I don't know if you're a hot sauce fan. I sure am. I got a whole bunch of banned hot sauces and regular hot sauces. I can't quite do like the hot ones, hot, hot, hot challenge, but I have a lot of hot sauces in my fridge in my cabinet. Axe Slasher, the thra crossover thrash metal band, the pizza thrash metal band, I like to call them, teamed up with Sauce Leopard. They're one of the sponsors of Psycho Las Vegas, so there's a music crossover anyway, to do this ass... I think it's Ass Gasher hot sauce, but actually maybe it should be Ass Gasser because I think that's what it's going to do to your booty hole. Uh, you can get a giant jug of this stuff. I wonder if it's good. I might try the little bottle first before investing in a giant jug, but everything Sauce Leopard I ever had is really great. Their Psycho Las Vegas hot sauce for the last one I went to was fantastic. So maybe it's worth a blind buy if you are a big fan. 
Joel Tapaska is here and Book of Worms is here on Instagram. Uh, word. Uh, Princess Plops, which band are you talking about you're obsessed with? I'm unclear. I might have missed a comment here as I'm reading fast. Uh, but thank you for following. I really appreciate you, Princess Plops. Oh, well, we're almost to the end of the show. Here's me waiting for a package. So it's time for the mailbag. And when you see the mailbag, you know what it is. I don't know if Kim Hansen is still here, but this will be a treat. This These photos are by Kim of the Melvins. The Melvins went out. They go out every show and crush it. They make new music every year. They are one of the longest running best bands. They basically coined a whole genre. What is the earliest band hot sauce I can remember? You're here. These are your photos. If you're, you're not watching on uh, Instagram, but if you're watching on YouTube or you watch the replay, the next to the last thing in the show is your photos of the Melvins because I'm going to share some Melvins stuff right now. But um, the earliest hot sauce I can ever remember is probably The Tears of the Sun by... Uh, Chris from Sabotage and TSO makes a hot sauce. I don't necessarily put it on stuff to eat it, but I cook with it as an ingredient and it just gives an extra kick to my taco Tuesday. I have some in the fridge to eat before I go see Overkill in a few minutes. So I'm very excited. Uh, but anyway, Melvin's man, uh, Melvin's put out a new album recently, a new re-recording of their original demo as well as a, the, the remastered demo, as well as a this band this year re-recorded. So Melvin's puts out some of their records with Ipecac recordings owned partially by Mike, Mike Patton of Mr. Brungle and Faith Moore and other things, and his partner, Greg Workman. And they also put out records on Amphetamine Reptile Records, the famous AMREP, the famous label that put out so many killer underground bands, Unsane, Oxbow, Melvin's, so many. Uh, cows, so many killer bands. And I, not that long ago, I interviewed Thomas Hazelmeyer, who's still running the label. Actually, Melvin's got Thomas to come out of retirement to go back and run the label. So they had a label to put this extra weird stuff out on because they're so prolific. And so I'll link that in the description where you can, I'll link it in the video where you can, description and the video where you can check out my interview with Thomas because it's really, he's not only a record label owner and a music maker himself, he also does art for albums and shirts and posters. So they were having a sale of this new Melvin's record at AMREP. And I got a package in the mail. And I think there's an extra special thing in here. So I already cut, I already cut it open. So we're going to just bust this thing out. And let me hear. I forget every week to embiggen myself so you can actually see me unbox the thing. So I just did it if you're watching on another channel. This is really excellently packaged. One of my pet peeves is I buy these expensive vinyls or they're shipped to me sometimes for free and they're not packaged very well. It pisses me off a little, but uh, this came, I had the option to buy this. This is a book. Uh, this is called score. Look how this is like taped to the cardboard, but very securely in plastic. So the cover doesn't get damaged. This is, um, I'm going to mute this for a second. You will not get the satisfaction of the ASMR that I just heard, but I didn't want it to annoy people either. So this is, here, I'll do a little one. Scorched Earth, this is a book of lighter artwork from Zippo. Thomas Hazelmeyer is part of this book because he did some custom stuff for them. He does a lot of stuff for brands. I don't want to damage the book taking it out of this, but I just wanted to show you this. This was like 10 bucks at the AMREP store. They have a lot of cool stuff you can't get anywhere else. And so this is Scorched Art, the, the incendiary, for your almost famous fans. I'm incendiary too. The incendiary aesthetic of flame right Zippos. So this is a Zippo artwork book here. And I'll just open to a page and there's all kinds of stuff here. Very cool. I can't wait to dig into this. But the main attraction for me of this order is this Melvin's album, which I did not open in advance. So it's here in the plastic. And this is The Devil You Knew and The Devil You Know. So this is uh, side A and side B. And uh, the 1986 demo is on side B. And it recorded in 2023, easy as it was. Now a limo, grinding process, they played that live, at a crawl, disinvite, and snake appeal, which I feel like they played at my very at my very first Melvin show, which I'm sure was like 90 or 91. Oh, Farman, I'm so sad to hear you bought a rare vinyl. Yeah, 
points off for that review. Um, I, like I said, pet peeve. Gonna open this with a chopstick, super refined, because I'm classy. Um, yeah, I have chopsticks on my desk. So what? I eat a lot of sushi. And um, yeah, unbelievable. Some of the stuff I've gotten from record labels, like current albums that are brand new, have not been shipped well. And then I bought a record from Urban Outfitters. It was like a vinyl like this in a box with one little air pad. And it was like bum, 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 bum in the box when I got it. I was like, what the actual F? You know what I'm saying? But let's just try to do this quickly. We're almost at the end of the show. You guys have been wonderful. I am going to grub quickly. Here's the cover. Those who can see it, here we go. Check it out. And then in the paper, I'm going to get rid of this paper sleeve and put it in the Mylar. Normalize the Mylar. Uh, it is a little more expensive to send your vinyls with the Mylar, but put your vinyls in a Mylar. No slip mats on your vinyl turntables. It creates static that wrecks the album. And here is the beautiful vinyl. You know, it's glory in this creamsicle and red swirl on both sides. I'm super excited about this. Actually, now I can shrink myself back and show you the slide. After this Melvin's photo collage by Kim Hansen, here is the album in a more presentable way with the cover and the back cover, just so you can appreciate the art. I did not show the back cover. Let's see if I can get the back cover one more time. Ah, here we go. Right. I, I looked, I read off the back cover and I didn't show it because I'm classy. But anyway, and I already shrunk myself. So anyway, useless, useless information. But anyway, that's our show. The end is nigh. And that is our show. Thanks for being here and humoring me and, and doing this with me as we do every week. And as we say every week at this juncture of the show, it's a tough time in the world. So please take care of yourselves. First and foremost, take care of yourself. Take care of each other if you can. It's a good thing to do. And stay as metal as humanly possible. I am Ghost Cult Keefe. Follow us at ghostcultmag.com. All the socials are Ghost Cult Mag. A couple of Ghost Cult Magazine on Reddit and Facebook. But at Ghost Cult Mag, thanks for being here. Have a great weekend. And I'm out.